Hey everybody, for the uh, first time ever in one of these videos you're going to be able to hear my voice. You might have seen some of the fluid stuff I did for One Frame of White in New York. It looks, uh, it looks kind of like this. If you haven't seen it I'll leave a link underneath the video. The actual battery that I, uh, I submitted to One Frame of White is, uh, is kind of huge and it's pretty hard to understand. Uh, it's got a lot of these sections that look like they loop around on themselves. So I'm going to try and explain what's going on by um, building one of those little fluid sections from scratch. I'm going to start with some pretty random motion vectors just made out of coloured noise. It's been blurred and colour corrected a little bit. These should point in pretty much every direction at once. If we get a motion blur node and turn turn the icons on, it makes it a lot easier to to tell what your motion vectors are doing. It's pretty hard to just look at the image and, and know what they mean. But we can see these arrows just kind of point everywhere. There's no particular direction. Uh, I'm going to color correct them slightly so that they point downwards a little bit. Now the um, the part that actually moves these vectors around is a pixel spread node set to a vector warp. And you can see all it does is uh, distort the vectors by themselves. So if we've got something that's moving upwards, pixel spread just moves it up. Now I'm going to write those vectors out to some EXR files. I've just been uh, doing it in a temporary folder, it doesn't really matter where they go. It's really important to remember to uh, turn these two LUTs off if you don't they'll be clamped at zero and uh, nothing will work. So I'm going to render that and we'll have 50 frames of motion vectors. I'm going to immediately read them back in and slip them by frame and put black on the front. Now we want this pixel spread warp to happen on every frame we want each frame to take the previous frame and warp it a little bit more. So to do that we're going to render that out on top of itself, which uh, sounds a bit crazy but as you can see it pretty much works. So each frame is now being warped from the previous frame's motion vectors. Now I want to be able to um, to adjust the vectors we started with, so I'm going to just chop in our little vex tree on the, on the first frame only. And it's going to be turned off for the rest of the clip. And I'm also uh, I'm just going to put a couple of muxes up here which are cached because uh, if you don't do that it tries to render uh, that whole little tree on every frame and it gets kind of slow. So you can see that's got faster again. Cool. So that's now moving around kind of by itself. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to see it if we put something in the blue channel, uh, the, the blue channel doesn't 
affect the, the motion of the fluid at all, it just gets carried around by it. Um, so you, you can put whatever you want in there. Uh, you can paint something or in the one frame of white thing I used, uh, I used text and, uh, and other stuff. So now I've got vectors in, uh, in red and green and we've got this grid in blue. And if I process that, you'll see the, the grid gets pushed around by the vectors. So, so far, although this is mo kind of moving around by itself, it doesn't really look like a, a liquid. You can, you can see there are a lot of things that look like they're moving through themselves or uh, overlapping, which, which can't really happen with a real fluid. And the little tree that I figured out to um, to stop that happening is this little guy. And um, pretty much what it does is um, it looks at pixels around the current pixel and tries to figure out if the motion vectors are pointed towards each other as if uh, as if they're going to collide. And if they are going to collide it creates new vectors that, that point the other way to, to, stop them, to stop them bashing into each other. And in the action there's, there's a whole bunch of surfaces which are um, offset from the current pixel to the left and uh, up and down. And they all add or subtract from each other. And the reason there are, there are three of these sections is because one uh, is looking 200 pixels away and one's five pixels away and one's 20 pixels away. It, um, it helps to get a smooth result if you don't just uh, do it at one distance, it seems like. And these, uh, the stuff after the action is pretty simple, it's just adding together the red and green channels. And then this is a, uh, a standard gradient map matchbox, which gives us vectors that point in and out of these areas. So I'm going to process that and um, you'll see it immediately gets a lot slower, which is a shame. But it also stops uh, all the parts that were overlapping from doing that. I'm probably going to speed up a lot of these uh, render sections in the video because you don't need to be seeing and watching this. Cool, so if we uh, just watch the blue channel of that, you can see it's now swirling around and it's starting to make little spirals like a, like a real fluid does. And it's not overlapping or, or moving through itself anymore. So that's basically how it works. Um, most, of the, most of the work I did to make things that, that looked a bit more interesting was, was just fiddling around with what that first frame of vectors looked like. So um, uh, as a quick demo, I'm just going to paint some stuff on that frame so you can see how, how stuff gets affected. Um, if I paint with, uh, with a red brush, we're going to get something that moves to the right, because red is uh, the x-axis. And I can also paint with uh, a negative red brush, because in, uh, in batch paint, Negative red's totally a thing, and you can paint with it. So we've now got something that moves to the right over here, and something that moves to the left over here. And if I process that, you should see those things pushing towards each other. So uh, if we watch that, you can see there's two lumps that come to each, all each other and, uh, and they end up kind of squishing out to the side. And if you look at the vectors you can see uh, in some frames they're starting to get a little bit crunchy and uh, kind of artifacty. And, and the only thing you can really do is, is uh, play around with the pixel spread buttons to stop it doing that. Um, if you really, if you really do turn the vectors up too far, pixel spread will kind of uh, freak out. Um, if I make something that's uh, really, really moving quickly in Y, 
and uh, if I process that you'll probably see pixel spread will start doing some pretty uh, horrible things yeah it just uh, breaks apart it can look kind of interesting but I did find that if I made things too extreme pixel spread would sometimes uh, lock up and crash so be a, be a little bit careful so you can see that on the those first few frames there are a lot of artifacts but they do kind of settle down eventually it seems like every uh, every time you feed a frame that's got really hard vectors like that through this little undiverged tree um, they get a bit more softened out so that's that's pretty much all you need to know to make everything that, that I did for the one frame of white video um, there are a, there are a couple of matchbox things that I've made since that that kind of help working with this, and I'll put them up on on uh, the Logic Matchbook page this evening, hopefully. Um, one of them is called uh, Vops for Vector Operations. Uh, it lets you to lets you easily rotate and scale and translate vectors. Uh, this is pretty useful for uh, rotating them especially because rotating vectors by uh, color correcting them is, is pretty much impossible. So I rotate these by uh, 45 degrees and, and look at what the motion blur icons show. You see they're now, they're now point over there. Um, the other thing that Vops does which is kind of useful is it can um, it can do the calculate the length of a vector pass um, and that looks kind of nice for um, for rendering the vectors because you uh, you can put this straight into to bump displacement in and it usually does something that looks kind of uh, kind of nice. It's kind of a, a cheap trick and there's some noise in it, but but it pretty immediately looks uh, like mud or uh, lava or whatever. And the other one that's that's kind of useful is um, this one called Advect. This is pretty much a, a replacement for what this pixel spread is doing, but it does it in a kind of smoother way. Um, so if I take out that pixel spread and put this, this in instead, uh, we'll see uh, see the difference. It um it can kind of deal with more fine detail than, than pixel spread somehow. So if I, uh, if I make that noise that we're using to start with a bit smaller and process that. You can see some really kind of small spirals forming which, uh, which is pretty difficult to do with pixel spread. It usually freaks out. When the, when the detail gets that tight and also it doesn't artifact like pixel spread does so um, where these things are smashing into each other it all kind of stays smoother you can see that's uh, starting to look like uh, some HR Geiger stuff in there, and this 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 noise that appears, I don't fully understand where it comes from, but thankfully it kind of sticks to the fluid. So uh, although it's an accident, it kind of looks pretty nice. It just adds texture to the to the surface. That looks pretty good. I uh, I think I might simulate a longer clip of that and uh, have a watch of it so I've just simulated uh, 10 seconds or so of that stuff 
once you've got something that looks nice, um, obviously you want to render it out to a normal flame clip. Um, you can just attach an output node and render it in a normal way, and you don't need to to have the EXR render turned on while you're doing that. So uh, that should render pretty quickly to the reels now. So I hope that makes some kind of sense or uh, enough that you can play with this anyway. I'll save this little setup I've made and uh, I'll link it underneath the video. Uh, one final note when you're uh, when you're playing with this stuff, when you've done something like that, you might want to uh, to delete all those EXRs you've made, or uh, one day you'll you'll wonder why you've suddenly run out of disk space. That's all. I hope that was uh, entertaining for you. If you uh, if you've got any questions or if it didn't make sense, um, you can shoot me an email and I'll, I'll try and explain a bit better what uh, what's going on. Uh, my email address as always is just my name. <laughs>